to be in series too since i can't um, explain everything in just the video it's gonna be too long and if it's too long people will not really want to watch it so so i'll, I'll make it serious and if you really want me to continue this series to just a comment you know put there's a comment section below this video so you can send your questions you know you can comment that okay i should do this since uh, it'll be it'll be in series two or a follow-up video or anything and i will try to redo it but if i don't see any comments or any um, push to do the next video and then i will not do it please if you really want me to do it just make a comment i mean go to the comment section and then write it there that you want me to do the part two or probably yes part two so thank you so much everybody thank so you. presently i'm in Benin republic yeah Benin republic to set up the um to train them on fish feed formulation and how to also make a uh, fish feed on the uh, because they have used their machine before and they want to make year to set up to train them intensively and to also teach them on how to formulate their own fish feeds it's a very simple thing on how to formulate and i think it's key it's very important as a fish farmer you should know how to formulate you don't just go there and ask people for formulations you know you don't just go there you know you i would really advise that if you're a fish farmer try and get a pilot pond a tapule pond betting pond mobile pond. just get Pilot pond and try different formulations on it. It might cost you a lot, yes, but at least you are gaining something which is experience. And this is a tip. Once you gain experience, nobody can nobody can bamboo you, nobody can give you a lie. You understand? And you even understand why all these things, all these ingredients are are are, 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 being, are being used in a particular quantity. You understand percentage inclusion rates of each ingredient will be well known to you. You know why they are being used, why is fish meal being used, why is soya being used being used, why is why are we using two kg of a particular product of a particular ingredient? Why are we using five kg of a particular ingredient? All these things you understand it. See, it's not too much for you to pay a consultant or pay somebody that you know is that understands this thing properly. Pay them, let them teach you. You can't know it by yourself. You can't start taking information online and feel that is going to work for your farm. That is going to work for your multi-millionaire uh, or multi-multi-million dollars project. No. Why don't you just pay the penny that you need to pay and understand this thing pro properly? That's scavenging on the internet or probably on YouTube trying to pick formulas from different uh, people making YouTube videos. You understand? I'm here to tell you the truth. You know, try and pay people. Be consultant, seek knowledge. So welcome back. And um let me quickly start with some few points I've highlighted or a few points I really want to discuss with fish farmers, people that have extruders, people that want to produce floating fish feet, you know. So thank you for listening to my hand. I'm sorry about this hand, but I think it's it's important too for us to know that we need to pay people. Okay, no, so why are your feet not floating? Why do you have an extruder, locally made extruder, imported extruder? Why do you have it? And your feet is not floating. There are so many things. There are so many factors that can affect the flotability of your fish feet. Do you understand? So the number one thing I will try to explain is get an extruder machine. Get an extruder machine. This is it. You cannot produce a floating fish feed without an extruder machine. It's not possible. Your feed cannot float if you don't have an extruder machine. Some people will call me and ask, ah, this price, Mr. Agbato Adebola, please, I have 
this sinking pellet, uh, what's it called, pelletizer, and I want to produce a floating fish feet. I'll tell them, ma, sir, ah, cannot float though, because it's not possible. A pelletizer cannot produce a floating fish feet. So if you want to produce floating fish feet, the first thing first is to buy an extruder machine. You can buy the locally fabricated extruder machine from us, which we produce, and people know us with it, and we have. And we have sent out to different African countries. We have our machines in Ghana, Gambia, Libya. We have in Kotonu. We have here in Bene. You understand? So we have our extruders all over. And in Nigeria, we are your preferred choice. You know, when it comes to locally fabricated extruder machine in Nigeria, we are number one. You know, no, no contesting. Thank you, thank you, thank you, people, for making us your preferred choice. I really appreciate that, and I'm really humbled. So you need to get an extruder machine. If you can get the local fabricated fine and if you want to get the imported too it's fine you understand you can get the imported too because you can and it all depends on preference anyways and i can't compel anybody to buy you just know which one you want there are pros and cons of those of um, such extruders the locally uh, the locally manufactured has some pros and cons the imported ones too has its pros and cons so you look into it and do your opportunity cost you know if you can afford to buy like that then look at this thing for you to do so number f one thing i earlier mentioned is you should get an extruder machine so once you have an extruder machine then you are no, you are on the step then you are that's step one of making floating fish feet so you're on the right step so you are taking step one so the step two the step two is get good fish feed ingredient do you understand get good fish feed ingredients don't just get any other ingredient don't get any other ingredient do you understand see this is it if you get some there's some ingredient especially for soya bean if you are using soya bean a uh, full fast soya instead of soya bean meal you might not get a good floating fish feed you understand you might not get a good floating fish feed for either tilapia or catfish you can you can you not get it so you should know you understand and how are you going to know is by paying people that will teach you fish fish experts you understand consultants that are very good we are one okay you can so i said you should get good fish feed ingredients so once you get those ones they are very good so because they are we have a particular gnc if it's gnc is called granite cake if it's not properly processed you might not get a floating fish feed if you are using just in such in gnc so this is it once we you are able to identify which gnc is good for you then it's, 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 you are on the right track of made, making floating fish feed so the first one is get an extruder machine the second one is your ingredients make sure they are quality and well processed do you understand so number three to also get a good floating so number fish three is make sure your ingredients are finely grinded do you understand Make sure your ingredients, the ingredients you'll be using, are dried and finely grinded. So once you have finely grinded ingredients, then you should you are number three steps into making floating fish feet. What do I mean by finely grinded? Make sure that your maize, your GNC, your soya, all the ingredients you'll be using are properly grinded and are finely grinded into powder. Do you understand? Not that you will still be seeing the grains of the maize or grains of GNC or grains of um, wait so far excuse me so once they are finally grinded then i can assure you that you are you are, you are on the third step of making fruity fish feeds do you understand so one extruder two good ingredient uh, quality ingredient three finely grinded ingredients do you understand so number four you need to understand how to condition your feet it's called feed conditioning feed conditioning so after grinding the next thing you do is you add water to your ingredients do you understand so the such process is called fish conditioning so we call it a um, wet mixing you understand so we call it wet mixing you can call it um, feed conditioning so that's feed conditioning it's a very important aspect of making floating fish feeds because uh, if you have too much water you might not get your floating fish feeds if the water is not enough you might not be able to get your fish feeds so you need to understand the moisture content you need to work with you understand you need to get moisture content you need to work with and the moisture content differs according to the formulation of the feed so if you have different stages of both the fish the catfish or tilapia so um, we can use a single formulation for all the both stage so there are different formulations 
So as we have different combinations, we have different moisture content that works with such combination. You understand? So it's not a universal thing. It's a thing that you need to know how to get. It's a thing that you need to calculate yourself. Nobody can tell you a particular moisture content to use for a particular formulation if the person is not using it. Do you understand? It's not a textbook. This is it because sometimes the feed ingredients you are using are even wet. How do you know if your ingredients are wet or not? Because if they are wet and you are using the cal the the proposed or the yeah, the supposed and the moisture content, you might not get the floating fish feed because the total moisture content is will, will be high. You understand? Because the ingredients you are using is not properly dried and you are still adding water to it. So it will be high. You will not get the floating fish feed. It's not possible. It's not it's not possible. You understand? So you need to understand this thing. You need to understand the moisture contents you'll be working with for a different formulation or for a particular formulation you want to do. This, this is key. key. And you can't just know it by reading. No, nobody you can't know it by reading because it, it differs. You know, if you are going through journals, what journals can easily explain to you is what has been what has been performed before. And things are changing. Change is the only constant thing. Then maybe the storage condition or the moisture storage condition of ingredients was it. Now, because we are having more people demanding for fish ingredients, the storage condition might be 10. So therefore, they will be, it will be totally different moisture content that it will need to make floating fish feet. Do you understand? So that's why I'm saying you can't base your knowledge based on old, old journals or what people are saying. You need to try it. Get your hands on. It's a, it's a, it's a getting hands on practical and theoretical class you know this is it because if you don't do it i can assure you you will be doing trial and error you will be doing trial and error and doing trial and error you'll be wasting your ingredients you'll be wasting diesel you'll be wasting so many things even your speed machine is wearing out gradually you understand and sometimes even if you don't get it it might it might lead to your speed getting jammed getting jammed what i mean by getting jammed is that the feet stuck in will, the feet will stuck inside the barrel of your extruder and your extruder machine will not roll again and with that it can lead to um damaging your um, electric motor do you understand so this might is a great loss you know so this is why i'm telling people once you've saved up or probably you've used a lot of money to buy an, an extruder machine why can't you call people that understand this thing see it's easy to produce uh, sinking pellets with a sweeter machine. It's very easy. So anybody that is coming to train you or anybody that you want to train, make sure that the person is producing a floating fish feed. Anybody can produce sinking pellets on an extruder machine, yes. But not everybody can produce floating pellets on an extruder machine. So please, please, if you are calling anybody to your farm to come and help you with your extruder machine, with your uh, feed feed mach fish feed machineries, make sure that it's an expert, somebody that has been doing this for a while evidence to you to say you know these are people that you should call to your farm if not it might lead to them damaging your student we've seen experiences i've seen a lot of experiences you know a lot of experiences a lot of farmers telling us ah we called this so so person and he came and he was just doing sinking pellets for us and we had we asked him to make floating. welcome back to our channel and if you've not subscribed to our channel please subscribe please subscribe because um, i will be dishing out very very top secrets about fish feed formulation because this is where we are spending our time to be saying this to our people that are coming to our farm to help us to do that thing we are uh, producing floating fish feed for sale this is where we've been investing more of our money so i want you to understand this so please subscribe to our channel share this channel with your friends you know your fish farmers your your um, friends your food dealers you know associations share our videos with them please don't enjoy this benefit you know share with people make comments you know comment on our page like this video if you really enjoy it you know because if i'm not getting enough push for this then i'm not doing any series i'm not doing a follow-up series because we still have a lot to discuss this is just about um to talk of what we still have to discuss about why your feet are not floating so we need a push we need comments we need people to subscribe to our channel we need people to make and uh, to like our videos so make all these things and give us a push so once i get the right push then we'll do a follow-up thank you so much it's still your friend 
and patrol Ebola head of operation Peace Pipes like we've been recording. So we are coming away next time. Stay blessed.